If you've ever done anything that involves making something for a client, whether it's furniture or home remodeling, shoot, even making a sandwich for somebody, we all know that people can be particular about what they want, and we've all experienced those difficult clients. And recently, I came across my most difficult client yet. They don't know what they want, they barely listen to me, they really have no vision at all, and the craziest thing is they won't even agree to meet with me until long after this project is gonna be finished. I just need you to sign off on the roundovers. So what do you do when you've tasked yourself with making a piece of furniture for your first unborn child? No pressure now, right? How do you actually start something like this? Honestly, I'm not really sure, but I figured a good starting place is to use that lumber that you've been holding on to for years. In my case, it was a couple big two inch thick boards of California walnut. Yeah, that should do the trick. The other thing about this piece is that I wanted to share it with all of you and make it into a set of plans. So I feel like it's necessary to let you know that having big two inch thick boards of California walnut isn't necessary. In addition to the actual materials needed for this piece, our plans include long form video instruction, along with supplemental technical drawings and dimensions to give you all the information you need to build this piece on your own so that you can hopefully share in my joy of making this piece. So after the typical process of milling and breaking down the big boards into usable chunks, I also knew I needed some one inch thick stuff and some half inch thick stuff. So I needed to resaw a lot of it to get what I needed. This walnut is going to become the outer case portion of the dresser, along with the drawer fronts and the base, while the inner cabinet is going to be made from beech veneered plywood. The design scheme is similar to a liquor cabinet I made a few years ago, and I really love the way that one turned out. So why not model a baby's dresser after a liquor cabinet? So once I had all of the boards milled to their final thickness, <coughs> what's that boy? <coughs> hmm, thick knife. I could start making some panels and I needed three of them, two short ones and one long one. The short ones were getting an angle cut onto the front of them. So I did a pre-marking to see how it would all come together and make sure I wouldn't have any issues down both the literal and figurative line. Then I could do the old domino glue up one, two. And after they were glued up, I could work on getting them to final dimension. The side panels could be squared up with a track saw. Then I rough cut the angle on the bandsaw before finishing it off with a sled on the table saw. And I ended up with two identical side panels. The main panel could then be cut to near finish length. We'll get it all the way to finish length soon, then rip to width while also cutting the matching angle to the side panels onto the front edge. At this point, the walnut stuff can be set aside and I can start working with some plywood. I went with beech veneered plywood because my wife and I are from California and my son is gonna be from California and California has beaches. And I needed a total of seven panels, four main panels and three more divider panels. I rough cut everything with my track saw, then started getting them to finish size on the table saw.
I needed a miter joint on the top two corners. And because the top panel was so long, it was easier to cut the bevel on the ends of that one with my track saw and then do the side panels on the table saw. From there, I could cut in some dominoes for the miter joint, which would allow me to dry fit the three main panels and get a measurement so that I could then get to work on the main horizontal divider panel. One of the things we tell people is that owning and using a domino isn't necessary to make these pieces. We actually made a video, which I'll link to in the description, about how and why we use the domino and the many alternatives for it, which we also outline in our plans. Most of the joinery from here on out in this piece is going to be dados and tenons. So I first cut the dados for the horizontal divider to fit into. This was pretty easy, just a matter of setting up a straight edge that was offset by the radius of my router's base and cutting half inch wide dados onto both panels. I also like to clamp the panels so they are back to back and this will ensure the dados are perfectly level on both sides. So with the dados cut, I could now cut the actual panel to size, then cut the tenons onto each end. And the way I like to do this is with a rabbiting bit. I set it up to cut a rabbit to match the depth of the dados, then start working my way down from both sides of the panel until I have a tenon that perfectly fits the dados I just cut. It's a really simple and easy way to cut accurate tenons and have the ability to sneak up on a good fit. Proof? Yep. With the main pieces of my cabinet cut and fitting nicely, I can now work on the divider panels. It was more of the same process, first starting with the top and horizontal dividers, clamping them back to back and cutting a dado onto both of them only this time stopping the dado short from the front edge on both panels since the divider panel is gonna be set back from that front edge. After that, it was the exact same thing with the walnut panel and the horizontal divider panel, clamping them back to back and cutting a dado onto both of them. Only this time, stopping the dado short from the front edge on both panels, since the divider panel is gonna be set back from that front edge. The small vertical divider panels could be made in the same way as I did for the horizontal divider panel, only these ones are smaller and vertical. Also for these I needed to trim the front of the tenons off. Because the divider panels are going into stopped dados, I have to trim the front part of the tenon off so that they slide into place and cover the front of the dado. A bit of handsaw and a bit of table saw gets this done pretty well. Around the same time as all of this, I cut the main walnut panel to final size to match the size of the plywood cabinet, and I also cut a rabbit onto both ends of the walnut panel, as well as the bottoms of the plywood side panels so everything would slot together nicely. At this point, things can start being put together with glue so that they never come apart, or at least not very easily. So first the plywood cabinet can come together, then I could cut some dominoes and just dry fit the walnut parts. I wanted these to come apart, at least so I could do some final trimming and details to make sure everything was looking good.
And finally, the last thing to do before the full glue up was to add some edge banding to the plywood. And now I'm gonna pass you over to Chris for a minute. And boy, are you in for a treat because Chris is gonna share his super secret tips for getting foolproof, perfect edge banding every time. Thanks, Sean. And boy, are you in for a treat because I'm about to share my super secret tips for getting foolproof, perfect edge banding every time. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is- Ooh, actually, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I forgot to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Both Chris and I have been using Squarespace to build and maintain our websites for years now. And honestly, it's one of the best choices I made when starting my business. At the time, I had no idea what I needed to do to build a website, but Squarespace makes it super easy to get up and running with plenty of professional looking templates to choose from, as well as making things like purchasing domains really simple. Squarespace also has plenty of e-commerce tools to help you grow your business. Things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allow us to easily manage online transactions and not get bogged down with mundane tasks so that we can devote more time to doing the things we enjoy, like making foolproof, perfect edge banding. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you already have one, go check out Squarespace to see if it might be a better option for you. Head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, thanks Squarespace. Now let's get back to Chris. And those are my super secret tips for getting foolproof, perfect edge banding every time. Wow, those sure were some great tips. Thanks a million, Chris. Actually, I'm gonna be honest, Chris didn't have any good tips. So let's get back to what I actually did on this dresser. And I needed some thicker edge banding for the outside edges of the cabinet, since I was putting some roundovers on these then just some regular eighth inch thick stuff for the center vertical divider. It would all be flush trimmed and cleaned up. And the nice thing about beach is the grain is really easy to match. You can barely tell it's there. At this point, I could finally assemble the entire cabinet. I started by drilling some oversized holes into the plywood side panels, which would let me attach it to the walnut pieces while still allowing plenty of room for wood movement, since it's very likely the solid walnut will move more than the plywood. So we could glue up the walnut panels around the plywood cabinet, and once it was all together, I could glue in the last two lower vertical dividers and attach the edge banding to those. With the full cabinet assembled, I could knock out four drawer boxes. I'm using Bloom hardware, so I made these drawer boxes the exact same way that I always do. Rabbit joints on either end of the side panels, and a groove around the whole thing to hold the drawer bottom. made countless drawers this exact same way. The only difference this time is I made sure to screw them up and make them a quarter inch too wide. And if you've ever used Bloom drawer slides, you know that if you're off by a quarter inch, you might as well put those drawer boxes in a rocket ship to the moon because you aren't even close. But even with the two large drawer boxes, I figured out a way to make them work without remaking them or needing to cut them up. I essentially needed to shift the lower portion of the drawer box in by an eighth of an inch on both sides. So a shave on the table saw and a thin spacer on the inside edge and they work like a charm. Where there's a will, there's a way. Hey Benji, if you're ever watching this video, don't give up, just like your dad. Anyway, with that little adjustment, I could get the drawer slides installed into the cabinet and get the drawer boxes in as well. And 
and that means I could make some drawer fronts. I made these as one big panel, which could then be cut in half vertically and horizontally to make four drawer fronts. This ensures I will have a nice grain match across all four of the faces. I also made some simple beach drawer poles, which were just quarter inch thick strips with a small cove cut onto the bottom side of them and rounded corners to mirror the design of the rest of the cabinet. Then I cut a groove across all of the drawer fronts so the poles could slot into place. that, I could attach all the drawer fronts onto the drawer boxes with a few screws in each one. The last thing to make was the base, which I kept pretty simple. I initially started to make this version of it with a full bottom panel but quickly realized it was completely excessive and would make attaching the base to the bottom of the cabinet unnecessarily difficult. So I switched it up to this version and you can see that happening right here. Besides cutting some angles onto the front edge of the base side panels and adding a round over, the rest of the base was pretty straightforward and simple. I just wanted it to echo some of the design elements from the main cabinet, but mostly remain unseen as much as possible. So at this point, it's just some sanding and finishing, and I'm actually at this point. So I'm gonna go sand and finish, because if I don't, Benji might show up and he's gonna wonder where his dresser is. So I've had a lot of thoughts recently, and especially while building this piece. What types of wood should I use? Is having four drawers going to be enough? Can I handle the physical and emotional strains of bringing a new life into a world that can at times feel both beautiful and terrifying? Is an oil or polyurethane finish going to be best? You know, stuff like that. Then I realized, you know what? You make the dresser, you put clothes in it. You have a baby, you put clothes on it. And from that perspective, Life is really just a series of obstacles that can be overcome by putting clothes on things. So if you really think about it, at the end of the day, what are we but just a whole bunch of dressers?